in the name of Jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season it is still dry season spiritually financially and otherwise I decree and declare let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall let the rain begin to fall you welcome to another spirit filled message on christocentric message if you're new to this channel i would entreat you to hit on that subscribe button and then to like this video as well i would want you to share this message across because we believe that as this message is coming forth it's going to bless you your graces are going to be imparted onto you and then god is going to visit your home thank you for watching stay blessed there's no time to begin to deal with this, but let's, I, I've, I've done the, this teaching um, describing the personhood of the Holy Spirit, but for the sake of what we're dealing with tonight, let's just look at it one scripture each wheel. Number one, Acts chapter 16 from verse 6 to 7. Please very quickly help us. We're proving that the Holy Spirit is a person. The Bible says when they had gone throughout all the region of Galatia, they were forbidden of the Holy Ghost. He has a will. The Holy Spirit forbade them. Verse 7. It says, and after they were come to all of those names, they went to those places, but the Holy Spirit suffered them not. He restrained them. The Holy Spirit has an independent will. It's very important. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11. 1 Corinthians chapter 12 and verse 11. 11. But all these walketh that one and the same self-spirit dividing to every man severally as he wills. The Holy Spirit has a will. The Holy Spirit has emotions. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. Ephesians 4 and verse 30. The Holy Spirit has emotions. The Bible says, grieve not the Holy Spirit. If he was not sensitive to that action, the Bible would not ask you to not grieve him. He says, grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby you were sealed unto the day of redemption. The Holy Spirit has intellect, intelligence. Romans 8.27. Romans 8.27. The Bible says, he that searcheth the hearts knoweth what is the mind of the Spirit. Why? Because he maketh intercession for the saints according to to the will of god he knows what is the mind of the spirit first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 write it down please first corinthians chapter 2 from verse 10 we're looking at 10 and 11 the bible says but god had revealed them to us by his spirit for the spirit searches there is intelligence with the spirit the holy spirit is not a robot there is intelligence to him he searches all things yea the deep things of god for what man knoweth the things of a man save the spirit of man which is in him even so the things of god knoweth no man but the spirit of god the bible reveals to us very quickly the purpose of the holy spirit we need to know why the holy spirit was sent why do we talk so much about him why did jesus talk so much about him The Holy Spirit has basically a threefold, a threefold ministry. A threefold ministry. Number one, he has the ministry of conviction. Number two, the Holy Spirit goes, This is the scope of his assignment. Conviction. What does it mean to convict? to bring to your awareness to compel you to pay attention to an object or a truth the holy spirit he's the one behind every kind of godly conviction number two the ministry of transformation what is transformation the name given to the process that makes you like christ in experience is called transformation my little children he says on whom i travail until christ be formed in you then the ministry of empowerment what does it mean to empower to empower means to engrace you to engrace you so that you are able to produce results 
that ordinarily you would not be able to produce. Are we together? All of the long stories that I started with giving the theological background is to this intent. Listen carefully. This is the core of my teaching now. Anywhere you find the Holy Spirit on earth, it is one of these three things he's doing. Conviction, transformation, empowerment. Look at me. Uh, we're going to discuss his ministry uh, and the objects, the recipients, who are the candidates that qualify for his ministry. But until then, I want you to understand something. Every time you see an unbeliever, the greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. Never forget this. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not house rent. The greatest need of an unbeliever is not the hospital. The greatest need of an unbeliever is salvation. The greatest need of a believer is transformation. When a believer is saved, the next assignment of the Holy Spirit is to sponsor transformation. An heir, for as long as he's a child, the Bible says, he differeth not from a slave, though he be Lord of all. Are we together? Transformation. Then the greatest need of a transformed believer is empowerment. This is the sequence. Every time, look, just learning this alone will make you a mature Christian. So you, you know how to bless people according to the categories. When you see an unbeliever, your principal assignment is to stand in partnership with the Holy Spirit to the end that he becomes a recipient of the life of God. No matter what you do to an unbeliever, if he has not received salvation, you have not given him the greatest gift. For a believer, the greatest gift you can give a believer is an atmosphere and an information that can lead to transformation. You can give miracles, you can build a house, you can bring breakthrough, you can bring healing. None of those things are superior in themselves. The most superior blessing that you can give a believer is access to light, illumination, bringing him to a place of transformation. Then for a believer that is transformed, the greatest need for a transformed believer is now to be able to prove and defend his proposition and for that you will need empowerment. Are you seeing that now? Just having this knowledge alone will make you such a mature Christian and you will know how to help people. You don't start talking about salvation to one who is already saved. Except you're just teaching him and mentoring him to also be an effective evangelist. A non-believer, salvation. A believer, transformation. A transformed believer, empowerment. Are we together? And may I add that the greatest need of an empowered believer is character and humility. When a believer is empowered, he now needs character and humility because knowledge can puff up. Remember our teaching? We just finished a series on witnesses. So the Holy Spirit has a threefold ministry conviction, transformation, empowerment. Conviction, transformation, empowerment. Now write this down, please. Who are the three principal recipients of the ministry of the Holy Spirit? According to scripture, there are three principal recipients of the ministry of the Holy Spirit. Number one, creation. You will be surprised to know that creation depends on the Holy Spirit to survive. The Holy Spirit is not just a reality for Christians or non-Christians. Without the Holy Spirit, creation cannot survive. It was the light that came from him that sponsored creation coming back again. Withdraw the Holy Spirit is not only men that will die. Creation will also die. Are we together? Job 34 from verse 14 and 15. The first recipient, the first recipient of the ministry of the Holy Spirit is the entire creation. From verse 14 and 15. If he set his heart upon man, if he gather unto himself his spirit and his breath, what happens to creation? All flesh shall perish together and all man shall turn again to dust. That means if God withdraws the Holy Spirit literally out of earth right now, 
men will wither creation will wither science will come to naught the holy spirit is the life-giving factor of creation this is true the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation plants animals nature etc everything that was made because without him was not anything made that was made in him was life and so everything that came from him has that life and that life is the holy spirit i have profound respect for science we have been able to advance so well in science especially in recent times people are still trying to disintegrate atoms to see if they can find a lot of other things you know and so on and so forth let me tell you behind if we keep breaking down breaking down breaking down breaking down we will arrive at one conclusion the unit of life is the word of god but in that word of god is the spirit of god ezekiel chapter 2 verse 1 and 2 the spirit entered me when he spake unto me verse 2 the spirit entered me so the word of god contains the spirit of god the word of god contains the power of god habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified habakkuk chapter 3 and verse 4 amplified it says and his brightness was like the sunlight and the rays streamed from his hand and there in the sunlight splendor was the hiding place of his power when you break life into his finest what you will meet is the word of god we call it energy we call it matter i don't mean to abuse and insult science but i can tell you from the authority of scripture the spirit of god is the life factor of the entire creation are we together the second recipient of the ministry of the holy spirit according to scripture is the unbeliever the unbeliever is not supposed to be an insultive word it's a description it's a state who is an unbeliever one who has not had the opportunity to hear and to believe the gospel what is the gospel a revelation of the father's love revealed in and through the substitutionary sacrifice of jesus man and creation being the object of that love and that sacrifice that is the gospel for god so loved the world john 3 and verse 16 that he gave his one and only begotten now the firstborn among we the begotten that whosoever believes in him should not perish the bible says but have life eternal unbelievers he has a ministry to unbelievers what is his ministry to unbelievers conviction the holy spirit has a ministry of conviction to unbelievers john chapter 16 please john chapter 16 let's look at verse let's start from verse 13 john chapter 16 it says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you please back down a little i'm looking for the scripture where find it for me if you can okay i think that should be john 16 from verse 7 go down to verse 7 same scripture verse 7 please john 16 and verse 7 now listen it says nevertheless jesus is speaking now i tell you the truth it is expedient for you that i go away for if i go not away the comforter the comforter will not come to you is the greek word alos parakletos the word alos means of the same material and the same mission the opposite is heteros alos parakletos the paraclet he says the comforter will not come unto you but if i depart i will send him unto you verse 8 when he is come what will be his mission his first assignment is he will reprove the world of three things number one of sin number two of righteousness number three of judgment he buttresses on that point verse nine of sin because they believe not on me so what is the sin there unbelief of righteousness because i go to my father and ye see me no more 
verse 11 of judgment because the prince of this world is judged listen to me the primary assignment of the holy spirit to unbelievers is conviction this is powerful so whilst you are listening to me now and the world is listening to me assuming i'm on a crusade ground while i am teaching sharing like reinhard bonke of blessed memory sharing like billy graham of blessed memory whilst you are talking it doesn't matter what expression it comes with in that crusade ground the holy ghost is hovering around the people bringing conviction what does it mean to convict to bring an awareness to plant in you seriousness over something conviction and awareness nobody sustains the power to save any sinner just with intelligence and oratory it takes the power of the holy spirit because there is a law that works in every sinner romans chapter 8 and verse 1 it says there is therefore now no condemnation it says to them which are in christ jesus who walk not after the flesh but after the spirit here it is verse 2 for the law of the spirit of life in christ jesus had made me free not just from sin but a law of sin that leads to death. Every time you are sharing the gospel, please listen to me believers. Every time you are talking to an unbeliever, you are telling him about Jesus, the love of Jesus. I want you to expect at the back of your mind that the paraclete is there with you, creating conviction. This is what happened in the book of Acts chapter 3. When they came and met the people, they said, who are these guys who are drunk with new wine? And Peter said, no, we are not drunk with new wine. This is only nine o'clock in the morning. But this is that. This is that which prophet Joel spoke about. And now he began, he went to David, he went to Joel. And when he spoke to them, the Bible says they were caught to the heart. That's the Holy Spirit. And they said, men and brethren, what do we do? He says, repent for the remission of your sin. And then you will be baptized and you will receive this promise. For this promise is unto you and unto your children, your children's children, as many as are far off. And in one day, 3,000 people came to Jesus. The convicting power of the Holy Spirit. He does not only convict, he compels. Is the Greek word anakazo. The compelling power of the spirit so that he will have men he can convict he also sustains the power to draw them from wherever they are and bring them to the atmosphere where they can hear the gospel this is powerful this is why we pray for people listen to me this is the entire idea about wanting more and more people to hear the gospel it's not just a celebration of crowd to show that a man of God has such influence over a city no jesus died for men largely and then creation so if he wants you to truly be an advocate of this gospel there must be a way of bringing men to you for god so loved the world why do we pray every time that god brings people to this place we don't just pray because we're ambitious people trying to look for a way of building an excelling career not at all we realize that until men come, they will not have an opportunity to hear the gospel. Thank God for internet right now. There are tens of thousands of people following online from different nations. And they now have the opportunity to hear, to be mentored, to be built. Everybody say conviction. So whilst you prepare to do the work of an evangelist, which is a mandate for all believers, you must know at the back of your mind, that while I'm teaching, because some of you are not able to win souls because you think, I don't speak very well, I don't know all of the scriptures. If the Holy Ghost is not with you, if you are not conscious of his ministry to convict, you will only waste your time trying to talk to a sinner. He will listen to you talk for over 30 minutes and you say, in this book, what happened? And you begin a debate there that ends you in anger. Many people have tried to go and preach the gospel without the consciousness of his convicting power. Let me tell you this. When the power of the Holy Spirit to convict is in a place, you can sing a song about redemption and say, come to Jesus. And people will run and come out because in that song, once the message of salvation is captured in it, I am not ashamed of the gospel, he says, for it is the power, not just the suggestion, the power of God unto salvation. Say amen. So that you leave this place this night 
conscious of the fact that the Holy Spirit has a ministry to unbelievers. Now you are not afraid of their faces because sometimes you'll be talking to people that when you look at their faces as if their face is so discouraging. Will this guy ever give his life to Christ? Whilst you are talking, they are not even giving you the attention. Don't mind them. The Holy Ghost is walking. At the end of that, you will see, let's, listen, go back to your family members. Some of you have family members that are not saved. You've been advising them. That's why they are not saved. They need more than an advice. They need the gospel. The only vaccination for sin is the gospel. The way your life is going, why don't you become a better person? That's counseling. That's not the gospel. The gospel is a revelation of the love of the Father. Jesus must be mentioned for it to be the gospel. The love of the Father must be mentioned for it to be the gospel. The sacrifice of Jesus. Are we blessed? Conviction. Let's hurry up. Hmm. What is his ministry? The third recipient of his ministry. Let's do a quick recap. Number one, the first recipient of his ministry is the entire creation. Number two, unbelievers. Number three, believers. He has a ministry to believers. In as much as he plays that role. Now, let me tell you this. Please look up. You have to learn this. When, come Dave, let me use you. Watch this. Assume with me for a moment that this gentleman is one who is an unbeliever. He's not been born again. He's not giving his life to Jesus. Okay? So I am teaching in church now. And the convicting power of the Holy Spirit comes upon him. Watch this. As I lead him to Christ, usually, you would notice in the context of my prayer, I might not even mention the word Holy Spirit. Why? Because there is no other name under heaven given unto men, the Bible says, by which we must be saved. The office of salvation is the office of the Christ. Even though the administrator of salvation is the Holy Spirit. You have to understand this. Jesus today is seated at the right hand of the Father. So when you sing a beautiful song, Into my heart, into my heart, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Remember, come in today. Come in to stay, come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Beautiful. Now, he receives the life of God. You say Jesus is in his heart, you are right. But the personality that comes in honor to that prayer is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit, remember, he's the extension of the presence of Jesus. So it is true from scripture that Jesus lives in his heart. But the personality that lives is the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is what we call eternal life. He does not bring eternal life. He is the life of God. Are we blessed? So Jesus is in his heart. But it is the Holy Spirit representing the presence of Jesus. He lives in him. Jesus is in heaven as a person. I hope you know that Jesus left with his body as a man. He did not leave his body behind. The fact that Jesus left with his body is the most classic proof that he's returning. Because you need a body to operate on earth. It was difficult for him to come the first time. He needed to rally around a woman to donate her womb for nine months. Now you don't need that again. Any moment he can come because he left with his body. The next time you doubt if Jesus is coming back, remember he has a body that he can use. Are we blessed? So the Holy Spirit comes in honor to that salvation prayer. Now watch this. This gentleman just gave his life to Christ. He is now a believer. What then is the next assignment of the Holy Spirit? Let me tell you this. Listen carefully. He is now, he's received Jesus Christ, but he's not transformed. His senses are still deadened. He's still living in the flesh. He's still a carnal man, even though a saved one. Now the Holy Spirit begins the journey 
that we call repentance repentance is a journey it's not just a one-off thing no repentance means to realign your mind are we together now transformation is repentance hmm. so he says repent for the kingdom of god is within your reach now to repent means to realign your thinking and your understanding because your living comes from your thinking effective living comes from effective thinking are we learning god bless you so now for a believer what is the first assignment of the holy spirit my concern now is for a believer we know that for an unbeliever his job is pretty simple to bring conviction to the end that the unbeliever will hear and receive the gospel the benefit of receiving that gospel is the life of god there is a translation from the kingdom of darkness into the kingdom of god's dear son what is the assignment of the holy spirit now to a believer is found in first corinthians chapter 2 and verse 14 write this down please the first assignment of the holy ghost to a believer is to activate your spiritual senses before the word of god starts coming into you you are already deadened spiritually. 1 Corinthians 2.14. Please help us. The Bible says, but the natural man. Please read with me. It's projected. One to read. But the natural man receiveth not the things of the Spirit of God. Why? For they are foolishness unto him. Neither can he know them. Because they are spiritually discerned. So even though this man is saved. Listen. If you leave that man this way many pastors and many leaders are, are listening to me do not leave members just born again and leave them there that harvest will rot and there will it will not be fruits that abide because even though they are saved they cannot do much for the kingdom because that transformation has not happened so what we largely do in church is that we save sinners and now they become believers in christ which is true and it's a fact and we leave them there after a few months we make them pastors we make them deacons we make them leaders in that state listen if you are not in the kingdom and even if you are in the kingdom and you are not transformed many spiritual activities will not make sense for instance why will a believer lock his himself in a room and dance and say i am walking my way to victory what does that mean if an, if an unbeliever or a believer that is not transformed sees you, he says this Christianity has turned adults into fools. It's foolishness unto him. Why will you say to sow a seed and you are saying you are using that seed to break lack, to break poverty? It doesn't make sense. Why will you be praying in some kind of language? You are just praying gibberish for hours and you are praying and you believe you are generating power. Who said that's how they generate power? are you seeing now so when you see anybody laughing at your experience your christian experience you already know the category now so you can show the person mercy by saying i think i know what you need you look when you want to bless people with books you gauge their spiritual levels what book will help this person now oh you were saved that's why great men like Reinhard Bonke, when you were saved on their crusade grounds, they had books that they would give you to help explain salvation and begin to show you the next step. What we do is that most times when the average believer is saved, in truth, he does not know what is the next port of call. He doesn't know what else to do. If he's fortunate, they can say, come to church. If it's a church that has a methodical system of growth and development, then happy for that man. Otherwise, he will have to freelance his ideas about spiritual growth. Are you seeing why some of us are not having efficiency in our spiritual experience? Your organs of interaction. Suddenly the things you once laughed at now begins to make sense. What is this about praying in tongues? Ba, 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 ba. All these people are shouting. And now the Holy Ghost quickens you. You are now alive to Christ. It now begins to make sense to you. Isn't it amazing that you used to laugh at people who were crying. Whilst they are prophesying, they would kneel down and lift their hands. And you laugh and say, church people. Now look, you are, you are caught in that trap. The Holy Ghost himself. 
remember when you will stand at crusade grounds from a distance and laugh and say nigerians religion is what poor people do and and the holy ghost is just watching you now look 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 at you you are at the forefront of that advocacy listen do you know why i'm teaching you this because true love is based on understanding not just emotion now that you know this when unbelievers or baby christians as we call them when they laugh at certain advanced things we do in the kingdom there's no point looking down on them and insulting them you show compassion because they are communicating their level of infancy you don't flog a baby when he pulls on the ground or when he moves around playing he's a child but when he's five year old and a five year old child and he behaves like that now you know that something is wrong with that child and that from a child thou has known the holy scripture which is able to build you up you see that to make you wise unto salvation the organs of interaction with the holy spirit that's the first assignment of the holy spirit to believers please learn this we're going to pray shortly the organs of interaction he activates your spiritual senses the bible calls it being alive unto god now the fire the passion you now understand why we pray now you understand why we do the things that we do and with our hands lifted up we will worship our king and with our hands lifted up we come before you rejoicing with our hands lifted up to the sky and the world wonders why we just tell them we love in our king oh we just tell them we love So when they do not understand why we do the things we do why will someone tell you you are a stupid man going to church every time and you can look at the person and say god bless you from whence does that compassion come they don't know what you mean to me they don't know what The Holy Spirit listen so that your intercession can now be effective some of you have loved ones who live around you but they fight anything that is pro spirituality the key is not to look down on them the key is to begin to pray the prayer of mercy that the eyes of their understanding be open some of you is your spouse you love God but your spouse does not seem to have that kind of passion and zeal now you know what to pray God help him is not the prayer. You must be intentional and methodical with your prayer. The diagnosis to that situation is that that person is saved, but is still in the flesh. He's still a carnal man. And the Bible says he's a natural man. He cannot understand the things of the spirit. They are spiritually discerned. So when the Holy Spirit comes, now he begins to help you. Fasting now begins to make sense worship now begins to make sense you can wake up in the night and pray and not feel guilty for stretching yourself that much coming to church i was glad when they said unto me let us go to the house of the lord most people think church is a place for people who are poor and broke and are struggling so they just quickly come and receive breakthroughs from god once they are all right they wave until the day they are in trouble again no no they that be planted in the house of God, they shall flourish in the courts of our God. The Bible says even in old age, that means they should be there in a long time, they will be fat and flourishing. The second ministry of the Holy Spirit to believers. Have I lost you? Are we still together? Now I'm, I'm zooming in on his ministry to believers. Number one is activating your spiritual senses. Number two, revelation and understanding of scripture this is the second ministry of the holy spirit please please pay attention ladies and gentlemen the holy spirit has the exclusive know-how to make scripture open to the believer 
you have to study scripture by submitting to his influence reading the bible just as a an intelligent christian manual let me tell you what you will find if you read the bible without him you will find a plethora of controversial statements at the end of your study you would arrive at one conclusion both the writers and the god who led them they are not thinking well if you read the bible without the holy ghost you will see lots of things the mistake i hope you know that the personality of the writers rubbed into the writings too so it takes the holy spirit to to perform that surgery and separate what came as a result of the limitation of the writers versus the intent what god intended to be understood That's why he's called helper. Bazanji soroba. Bazanji kunyaba. My helper. As I study scripture. I learned the ways of God. John 14 and verse 26. Just two or three scriptures very quickly so that we'll tie up this teaching. Is God helping us? John 14, 26. Help us please, media. John 14, 26. But the comforter, now you know the word, Allos Paracletos, the paraclet of God, which is the Holy Ghost, whom the father will send in my name what will he do he will teach you all things everybody say the holy spirit is a teacher one more time please say the holy spirit is a teacher he will teach you all things and bring all things to your remembrance i rebuke memory loss in the name of jesus christ the bible says the holy spirit can bring to remembrance whatsoever i have said to you that means there is nobody that is dull the holy ghost can bring to remembrance he can bring to remembrance are we together john chapter 16 from verse 13 now very quickly john 16 from verse 13 how be it look up please jesus began to speak he says i have many things to tell you he was talking to the disciples but ye cannot bear them now he says how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you my goodness into all truth we're coming there he will not speak of himself but whatsoever he shall hear he shall speak he says and he will show you things to come apostle how do you know what will happen he will show you things to come he didn't say he will show prophets things to come he will show you things to come he can let you know that this man coming is your destiny helper position yourself well do not miss that opportunity he will show you things to come so the ministry of the revelation and the understanding of scripture you find out that you have difficulty understanding scripture you can call on the holy spirit with every sense of humility and faith spirit of the living god you were sent to open up scripture open it up open down my eyes that i may behold wondrous things from thy word and suddenly you begin to study things that you never saw there were oases that you are not seeing it does not mean it's not there your eyes must be opened in the name of jesus christ number three very quickly what is the ministry of the holy spirit to the believer number three guidance and direction this is very powerful guidance and direction now we can read john 16 and verse 13 proper john 16 13 then we go to isaiah 30 21 john 16 13 how be it when he the spirit of truth is come he will guide you everybody say guide you truth is dangerous without guidance it's not only a lie that destroys truth can destroy many people have been destroyed by the truth he must guide you when you're in the kitchen not every part of the knife has the rubber 
handle is that true there is a part you used to cut and then there is a part that you can hold do you know that as profitable as that knife is you can hold it wrongly to your detriment there are women who have used knife in the kitchen and mistakenly cut themselves that was not what the knife was meant for but it happened anyway you can use truth the devil can conjure one truth into another many people who have gone into error in the body of christ is not lies that de that deceive them is truth without balance the devil can use it is written and destroy you don't say once it's in the bible i will do it you must be guided there are many things in the bible demons spoke men spoke in the depravity of their heart it's all in the bible the bible is a prophetic book you can make it speak any language you want the spirit of god needs to guide men are we together isaiah 30 21 i'll explain to you shortly the difference between guidance and direction the bible says and thy ear shall hear a word behind thee saying this is the way walk ye in it when you turn to the right hand and when you turn to the left psalm 23 the classic sign that reveals the ministry of the holy spirit to guide 23 verse 1 media please help us the lord is my shepherd say it after me the lord is my shepherd hallelujah the lord is my shepherd i shall not want verse 2 the bible says he makes me to lie down in green pastures he leads me everybody say he leads me he leads me beside the still waters uh-huh verse 3 he restores my soul again his leadership comes he leads me in the path of righteousness for his name's sake now look up please let me explain to you the difference between direction and guidance direction tells you where to go guidance tells you how to get there direction tells you where to go guidance tells you how to get there when you are walking with the holy spirit you will not get direction every day sometimes in a whole year you may just get two or three instructions for your direction what you need every day is guidance I can direct you and tell you you want to go down to the overflow outside go this way turn left go right that's direction they are outside but guidance will tell you as you come down there is a staircase here be careful are we together that's guidance so here's what the Word of God says it says thy word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path a light to your path is direction a lamp to your feet is guidance listen to me most of us have received divine direction you have not received guidance you need to pray for both direction and guidance if you're with me say amen, amen. and to do both is no other person than the Holy Spirit himself he can guide he can direct hello beloved in Christ we hope this message subscribe button for us and then like this video as well share to your family and friends to bless them because we know that this message will be a blessing to their body to their soul and to their spirit we would need you to do one thing for us to tell us in the comment section where you were watching us from and if you've got any testimony for us kindly share with us thank you for watching in the name of jesus drought in your life that even when it is physical rainy season, it is still dry season spiritually, financially and otherwise. I decree and declare, let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain begin to fall. Let the rain.